then looking ahead with this next story, Japan's space agency has made history. This when two of its unmanned rovers successfully landed on what you see there, an asteroid. The agency says they are in good condition and are transmitting images and data. Yeah, that picture gives you a sense of how fast both were going, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a second. The tiny robot separated from the Hayabusa 2 spacecraft and landed on the asteroid entitled Ryugu, which is between Earth and Mars. Japan hopes the spacecraft will be able to bring asteroid samples back to Earth in 2020. Joining me now to talk about this is retired NASA astronaut Leroy Chow. Hello, Leroy. Thank you for being with us. Always good to have you. Oh, great to be back. Thanks. Well, let's talk about this feat to the complexities of landing a spacecraft with two rovers on an asteroid, Leroy. First, how fast are both traveling? How far out in space is this asteroid? And what's its size? Well, they're both, both pieces are going pretty darn fast. The, the orbit ranges between what we call one astronomical unit and about one and a half. So roughly between uh, the distance from the sun of the Earth and then that of Mars, which is half again as far away from the sun as the Earth on average. And so this, the spacecraft, the Hayabusa 2 spacecraft itself is about the size of a very large refrigerator and these rovers are a little bit smaller and they were deployed successfully uh, as you saw in the news and they've gone down to the surface, which is pretty incredible because this uh, Ryuku, the, uh, the asteroid itself, is only about one kilometer in diameter and the gravity level on this uh, asteroid is about one 80 thousandths that of the Earth. And so to be able to put a lander down on that low gravity uh, uh, asteroid is pretty incredible. And these things are, are not traditional rovers. They actually hop. And so they have a mechanism that allows them to jump around on that asteroid. They go up to about 15 meters off of the surface and, and stay up in, in uh, above it for up to about 15 minutes. And what they're looking for, they're looking for organic compounds and other measurements uh, in addition to the great pictures that they're sending back and so it's exciting uh, because uh, you know a few years ago the European Space Agency sent Rosetta to Comet 67P and the lander that went down onto that comet actually found mm -hmm. signs of organic chemicals uh, including the the uh, existence of one of the amino acids the basic building block to DNA which is right. a basic building block to life right so when people think oh what's the big deal asteroid seems kind of not so interesting on the surface but you dig down and it certainly can be, so that's what they're looking to do here. And do I understand that uh, these rovers will come back with the samples that they take from this asteroid? Right. So what's going to happen next month, actually, the uh, uh, the Hayabusa 2 spacecraft will fire an impactor, basically uh, kind of a missile almost into onto that uh, asteroid to kind of blast uh, down into the surface, make a crater, and kind of then thus exposing uh, fresh material underneath the surface. And those, so these rovers are going to go into that crater, pick up some of those raw samples or, or protected samples, and then actually bring some of that material back to Earth in 2020. So very exciting mission. And what, is, what does this say for uh, Japan's space agency, the fact that Japan has done this? Well, Japan, you know, they had a very successful Hayabusa uh, 1, if you will, the original Hayabusa mission a few years ago. It had some technical issues, but it was still able to get some pretty interesting science. And so this is their second effort at this, and they're able to, obviously able to do it. They've launched probes to the moon. Uh, of course, JAXA, the Japanese space agency, has been very active with NASA as far as putting astronauts uh, aboard space shuttle and, and then aboard the International Space Station. And so Japan's been a very good partner with the United States. States for space flight, uh, and it's been very impressive in both the human space flight side as well as the unmanned probes like Hayabusa 2. Well, that picture that uh, it sent back is really remarkable, isn't it, um, from an asteroid. Where, where are we in space exploration, Leroy? How would you characterize it? We, uh, the U.S. has a probe spiraling toward the sun. Uh, Japan has just landed uh, on an asteroid to pick up samples to figure out what does it all mean and where did we come from? Uh, where are we in space exploration? Well, it's been very exciting over the last couple of years, two or three years. I mentioned the, the European Space Agency, uh, uh, the mission to 67P, the Rosetta. That was very exciting. Uh, recently, the NASA, of course, has the Juno mission studying Jupiter. Uh, and then a couple of years ago, New Horizons found out 
very fascinating things about Pluto that we had no idea of. And uh, so you're right, a lot of very cool things are happening. And of course, in the human space flight side, we have very exciting things happening with companies like SpaceX and Boeing about to launch uh, you know, U.S. astronauts on commercial vehicles to ISS. And then uh, all the talk of the uh, exploring the moon and one day Mars. And Elon Musk in particular, uh, you know, wants to go and explore and, and even colonize Mars. Much, much to explore for sure. And uh, it's very exciting times. Leroy Chow, as always, always a pleasure to have you come on and talk with us. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. It's fascinating. Isn't it, though? Love yeah. it. Our top stories are right around the corner.